everybody, it's me, Margaret, and I'm sitting here thinking, what do you do with your leftover turkey, or chicken for that matter? I, well, it's really not a problem for us because we generally don't make turkey for Thanksgiving. I know, gasp, it's shocking. We have beef tenderloin instead because our family tends to not like your typical Thanksgiving dishes. Not a problem, but we did do a small turkey breast. Tucker smoked it on the grill and it was out of this world, but we still have some left over even after we've had several sandwiches. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite recipes right now. Even if you think you ate it all gone, think again. Make some good broth to put in the freezer for later for any recipe that calls for chicken broth. You get your pressure cooker out. In this case, it's an instant pot. About two cups of water. Depending on how it was cooked to begin with, we'll determine if I add typical broth type vegetables like carrots and onion. Today, I'm not adding anything to this rotisserie chicken, but water. And I will turn it to pressure cook for about 20 minutes. On high, and hit start. And then you have this nice broth. And I'll see how much chicken I can pull off that bone. After it's cooled a bit, I pour the broth through a colander and into a container and refrigerate. See the layer of fat that forms on the top? It's easily removed once it's chilled, and then I put this broth concentrate in the freezer for later. I'll add two more cups of water to make a quart of chicken broth. Then go back and check that colander and see how much lean chicken you can remove from all that skin and bones. I got about a cup and a half, and we'll use that next. Now, I always do this. I think I've filmed enough to edit, and then I sit down, and I'm like, oh, darn, I should have said this. Let me say that there are three subjects that I do not talk about because it just sort of irritates people, and that is religion, politics, and nutrition. <laughs> Now, I'm going to say this because people are really crazy about what they believe and what they think is the right thing to do, but I do have a background in nutrition. It's Lifestyle and Weight Management Certification, lots of nutrition in there. For years, we have known that the old way of thinking, which is low fat, is not good. That's not good for our brains. It is actually not the thing that's causing the heart disease. Carbs, sugar, refined carbohydrates actually, and sugar, those are the things that we really need to avoid. We need to increase our fats. Well, there is one type of fat you really need to avoid, and that's trans fats. Saturated fats, like in coconut oil and things like that, they're fine. They're, this is science, it's backed up, it's real. Even mainstream media, like Time Magazine and our news and stuff like that, is coming, finally, coming <laughs> into the light and understanding this. And I will say that if you've got a doctor that's still telling you that you can increase your cholesterol by eating cholesterol, like eggs and stuff like that, no, you need to go to another doctor or basically challenge him on when is the last time he has updated his information on nutrition and the body and how it works. Now that's all I'm going to say about that. Now I'm not going to get into a big debate with anybody in the comment section below, so don't even try to challenge me on this or whatever. This is the way I, I think, this is the way I believe, this is the way I eat, and I've got the numbers to show the difference in our health. So with that being said, I want to say that the broth that I just demonstrated for you is not actually a true bone broth and a bone broth is something that once upon a time we used to have to make it at home with a good quality meat and you are actually getting some more amino acids that are not present in normal types of broth. We used to have to make it. Now you can buy it on the shelves because like I said mainstream media is coming to catch up with what science has known for quite a while now. I do make bone broth but that's not a recipe for one. <laughs> If you want to make a bone broth, throw a couple of tablespoons of um, apple cider vinegar into your broth. It helps to break down some of those, uh, what's in the bones that is actually good for us in that. So, but anyway, I didn't want to get off on a discussion about health, but if you're wondering why I do a lot of high fat dishes, high protein dishes, that's why. That's the way you keep your cholesterol low. That's the way to go with good heart health. That's the way to keep your weight at bay. Carbs, 
cut them. Now this next recipe that I'm going to show you is actually done in my Instant Pot and an Instant Pot is nothing more than a pressure cooker. Oops, I meant to say the previous recipe was done in an Instant Pot. Now I have been a pressure cooker user for years. This is my old one. My aunt got me started on them and I love them. But now the Instant Pots, so that's just a brand name. You can, Cuisinart makes one. There's a lot of people that make an electric pressure cooker and I would highly recommend it because I find it is even safer and it has a lot of preset things on there so you don't have to go remember <laughs> how long do I need to keep this soup on because mine says soup and it reminds me that. These also have some safety valves built into them but the, the ones that are electric they're even better. So I like my Instant Pot. I put off buying it a really long time but I have fallen in love with it and I use it all the time. This next recipe is a recent discovery of mine and I have fallen in love with it. I'm going to put the link in the description box below, but look how great it looks. I'm going to modify mine just a little bit because I'm using leftover chicken. I'm not actually going to brown the chicken to get it that lovely color like that, but it works just as well. It's yummy. This recipe calls for sun-dried tomatoes, but all I have on hand is sun-dried tomato pesto. Spoiler alert, it was delicious. Now, if you've watched any of my other cooking videos, you know that I'm a cheater cook. I never am prepared with the exact ingredient, and I make do all the time. Now, there wasn't enough oil in this jar, so I had to add some of this wonderful blend that's also a new favorite of mine. It's called the Chosen, <laughs> and it has lots of heart-healthy fats. Saute two tablespoons of minced garlic which translates to six cloves for you real cooks out there then add the sun-dried tomatoes the recipe calls for one teaspoon of Dijon mustard but I like more so one tablespoon for me then I remembered that I had some mushrooms in the fridge so I threw some of those in but these are not in the original recipe but whatever now for the cream and as you might expect I didn't have enough cream, so I added milk to get to the one and a half cups mark, and then let all that simmer a bit. Now add three cups of spinach. Now I buy huge containers of fresh organic spinach, and I freeze most of it. I learned this tip from one of y'all, Cajun Queen to be exact, and I have it on hand for smoothies and recipes like this without fear of it going bad. Now here's where I add that leftover meat, which in this case is rotisserie chicken and some delicious turkey that Tucker smoked on his big green egg. Then you add a half a cup of Parmesan cheese and you let that melt all through the sauce. Now, average people would serve this over pasta or rice, but the healthier option would be steamed vegetables. Spaghetti squash or zucchini needles are also excellent choices, but I didn't have any of that, so I'm just adding extra spinach, and I'll eat it just like this. So thanks for watching, and if you've got some good ideas, put them in the description box below so we can have a little collection of what to do with our leftover turkey or chicken. <laughs>